I'd like to welcome you to sunny Boston Harbor, um, or as the locals say, Boston Harbor. Uh, so welcome to the MIT Sloan CIO Leadership Award Dinner. Tonight we'll be here for networking, good food and drink, and to honor four exceptional CIOs. But first, I'd like to thank everyone that's made the symposium and this dinner tonight possible. Recently, the Enterprises Project asked me what's unique about the MIT Sloan CIO Symposium. And I said it was the only IT event where that brings together the academic thought leadership of MIT with the in the trenches global experience of leading CIOs. I also said it was the only major conference um, that's held on a major academic conference, uh, campus I meant. Um, most importantly, I said it's the only symposium that is held um, or run by volunteers um, of this size and caliber. Um, so I've just been told back there you're still having trouble hearing me. Um, I think there's some other things wired to it. Okay. Um, so I, I will do this. All right. So is, is that good? Okay. Um, I will also build some biceps in the process. Um, so, um, so volunteers, you know, I'd like you to raise your hands. So yeah, thank you for your intellectual curiosity, your hard work, and your dedication. Uh, tonight would not be possible with the backing and support of the MIT Sloan Alum Boston Alumni Association Board of Directors. Uh, board members, raise your hand. Thank you very much for your support. And where would the symposium be without its thought leaders? The MIT Initiative on the Digital Economy, IDE, and uh, the MIT Sloan Center for Information Systems Research, CISR. Thank you for the academic thought leadership that you're bringing to us uh, tomorrow. And you know, those from either IDE or CISR, please raise your hand. And I'd like to thank our speakers for their insights and war stories that they're bringing to the symposium. The symposium isn't just about theory, it's about putting theory to work. Thank you, speakers. And I'd also like to thank our sponsors. Without their financial support, this dinner and the symposium would not be possible. Specifically, I'd like to thank our diamond sponsors, Samsung and Euler Packard Enterprise Intel Partnership. Our platinum partner, Equinix. Gold sponsor, Corn Ferry. Desire. Desire. McKinsey. Top Coder. Quick Base. Level Three. Russell Reynolds. Markley Group. Applause 
And I'm afraid that I didn't do my homework on this one. I would meant to get a pronunciation lesson. So if I butcher it, I apologize. Kiminario. <laughs> Digital Realty. <laughs> Deloitte. <laughs> and IBM. <laughs> Finally, let me thank our bronze sponsor, the MIT Executive Education. Each sponsor has great insights into the digital economy, so I encourage you to visit their tables tomorrow. Now let me introduce my partner in crime, George Westerman. George is principal research scientist at the MIT Initiative on the Digital Economy and is co-chair of the MIT Sloan CIO Leadership Award Committee. Well, I have more to say about you, George, but if you want to just jump in here, that's fine. Okay. Um, so the award criteria is based on the real business of IT, how CIOs create and communicate value. Co-authored by George. Um, last fall, I spent a week in Ma Naples, Florida, and I can attest firsthand that the real value of IT is a great beach read. <laughs> George, also the co-author of Leading Digital, Turning Technology into Business Transformation. Uh, George will be moderating tomorrow's panel on developing your organizational skills for the digital future. Please welcome George. Uh, wow, yeah, so we do, have, we do have to hold this up here, don't we? Which is going to be really hard as I try to read the script. So, uh, yeah, thanks, Lindsay. Thanks, everybody, for putting this phenomenal event together. Uh, every time I come here, this event is just bigger and better and more exciting, and um, that's neat. Uh, I, I'm here, I have the wonderful job of announcing the finalists and the winner in the... the CIO contest here. Uh, in today's IT-driven economy, it's a given that you got to use technology to move forward as a CIO, but some CIOs are just better than others. Um, they're driving change in the organization. They're not just doing the IT stuff. So that's why we launched this award nine years ago. Oh, no, really? All right, how's this? Yeah. So that's why we announced that we launched this award nine years ago. It's to recognize the best and the brightest of the CIOs out there. Uh, we wanted to honor CIOs who lead their organizations by delivering exceptional business value and innovative use of IT. That's a mouthful, um, but the really key point is they're playing a real strategic role in transforming their enterprises, not just in managing the IT organization. I really never cease to be impressed by the caliber of the people that come into our award process it gets harder and harder to make any choices at all in this process. Um, I've been with the award five years now, about five years now. Um, but you know, we actually have somebody here who's been with the award all nine years. Uh, Mike, are you here? Mike Johnson is not only the founder of this award, I'm sure he's the tallest person in the room too. <laughs> so we have big... <laughs> Uh, Mike, Mike had the vision to create this award nine years ago, and I don't know whether you ever had an, an any idea it would go as far and as great as it's become, but Mike has been part of it every single year as part of the award committee. Uh, I just want to call uh, attention to a few other uh, people who are the volunteers here. Uh, the rest of the award committee, uh, Ray Chang is our co-chair. Uh, Lindsay, who not only runs the award, uh, runs the conference, is also part of the award committee. And Ilya, are you here? Ilya? Hi, and Ilya also is our newest member of the award committee, uh, doing some really great stuff to make this thing work. 
Uh, one of the one of the things about having the award get bigger and better every year, of course, though, is that there are more applications to review. And so we have a whole army of reviewers that have gotten involved in judging in different ways. So if you were a judge, can you raise your hand? Great. Uh, this is a lot of work. We really try hard to do a good job of this. We do the, the awards in three rounds. So the first round is just a basic review according to some criteria on do these people seem pretty good. And from there we narrow it down to about 10 or 12 people. Uh, and there are an awful lot of judges that get involved because every application is seen by three different people and reviewed in a very rigorous way uh, to see if you can get there. Uh, the next round we take the semifinalists between 10 and 12 people and we subject them to a committee of former finalists and winners in the contest. So they have very high standards and they know what to expect and the discussions, that's the best discussion of the year, uh, watching that happen. Uh, and then we have to narrow it down to a very small number of finalists, which is, um, given the caliber of the people in the room, actually remarkably good. These people are great leaders, they're great communicators. We actually converge pretty quickly. And then there's a small committee that interviews each finalist. And so that's the committee, that's uh, uh, me, Ray, Lindsay, and then one other person, Irving, uh, and I won't, Irving Wladowski Berger. Uh, Irving has been in the technology industry and done more to the technology industry than the rest of us could ever dream to. And uh, I just, I'm always delighted to be working with him uh, on this process. So, thank you. So, uh, you know, those people all worked very, very hard on the process, uh, and we got to the finalists, and then we had, after the interviews, we had the tough job of choosing a winner. Um, but let's hold on that for a little bit, okay? Uh, first of all, I'd like to tell you about these amazing finalists we have here uh, that made our job so hard. So, um, you know, as, as Ray said, these people really set themselves apart with their high-level strategic focus, their exceptional technology offerings to enable our digital economy to thrive. Uh, what I will say is these people are tremendous leaders, not only of the IT organization, but of their whole companies. Uh, so if, if I could, when I call your name, if you could just stand up for a minute and let everybody see you, and I'll just say a little bit about you, and you can sit down for, after that. Uh, so first, Suresh Kumar. Uh, so it's not easy to introduce game-changing technology when your company is 230 years old. Uh, BNY was founded by Alexander Hamilton, and it's still in existence. Um, so they, they're still going strong. Uh, but you know, after you've been working for 230 years, you've got a little bit of spaghetti in your back office systems. Uh, you've got a few extra problems that you need to resolve. And then there were some mergers in that process, too. Um, Suresh took that on and did some amazing things there. Uh, he you know, their company has $29 trillion in assets under custody. Um, th he's got 13,000 people just in basically the client technology organization. Uh, and you can imagine the systems that needed to be fixed and the processes that need to be fixed in there. Um, Suresh is also, uh, so what Suresh did is he took on the problem of fixing that. And he and his team completely redid the back office operations, put them up on the newest technology, getting the APIs in there, making it modular, putting it on the cloud. So not only can their clients use it, they can now sell a bank in the box to anybody that wants to get started. They just buy it from BNY Mellon. Uh, it's a really interesting process. And uh, one, of, one of Suresh's jobs is to actually, he now has the business unit that's going to try to make money on this beyond their current client services. So Suresh, nice work on that. Thanks. Uh, congratulations on being a finalist. Next up is Jean Lieb. Uh, you know, sometimes when you're looking for the seeds of innovation, you find them just in your own backyard. And Jean managed to do that. Uh, she's the SVP and CIO at FM Global, which is the most important company you've never heard of. Uh, FM Global is basically the leading property and casualty insurer for commercial properties. Did I get that right? Not casually, just property. So I don't own any commercial property, so I have no idea who she is. Um, 
But the interesting thing about commercial insurance is it's really pretty, pretty customized to every building that you're insuring, and it's a really tough job to do. Um, they're, they're one of the leaders there. Now, Jean did something interesting. Uh, she didn't, she, they asked her to create a mobile strategy, and she said, oh, I can do better than that. And so what she did is she found an interesting set of capabilities inside the company and decided to put them outside the company to let the clients use it to manage their own risk. So she created this thing called the My Risk Portal. So it not only tells you what your insurance policies are doing and what your payments are, but actually the models and the scenario tools so you can figure out what risks are biggest in your organization and find ways to manage that. So you know, this idea of going beyond, right, not doing what you're told, but actually doing the right thing is a real key, a real hallmark of great leaders. And Gene has done that. And frankly, this thing, this is this, my risk. Every time I would walk around anything in financial services, they say, you've got to find out what Gene's doing. It's really cool stuff. Uh, so, so that's neat. She's a member of the executive committee, the oversight group for transformation. She runs the technology steering committee. Um, and uh, you know, she just represents this wonderful opportunity to say, let's take IT to the next level and change our business. So thank you. Next up, David Neitz from CDM, CDM Smith. So CDM Smith is a giant global construction and design firm. They not only do construction, they also do some really fancy modeling and, and cool scientific stuff that the engineer in me absolutely loves. Um, and you know, it's easy to think about what David did as a cloud strategy, but it's just so much more than just a cloud strategy. So um, they had a problem that their models took a little while to run. And so if you wanted to make a design change, they'd say, okay, give me a couple days, I'll come back and give you the design change. And we all know what that looks like when you're trying to improve a process, optimize a process, optimize the design when there are days in between cycles. What David did and his team did is they said, we can fix this. They took, using some very specialized cloud operations, and sped up this process 20-fold. So what used to take days now just takes minutes. And what's nice about that is it didn't just get faster. It actually changed the whole way that their company deals with clients. So now instead of having to um, you know, go away and come back, they just sit down with their clients. They design together. And not only can they design together on these things, but they can do things like groundwater stuff and solar stuff and all this really cool heavy modeling stuff is all available right there. And what's neat about it is one, one, they've changed the way that they work with their clients and their clients love it. Number two, every time they pull in a new model that's just so, so super cool and MIT-ish, their customers start to appreciate them even more for the power of the capabilities that they have. Uh, so you could call it a cloud thing. You could call it a complete transformation of the way they talk to their customers. Uh, it's your choice. I think I'd take the second one. Okay. So thank you, David. And last but not least, if you haven't figured it out, we're going alphabetically here, um, is Steve Phillips. Uh, so Steve is, Steve is a CIO and SVP for Abnet. Um, and Abnet uh, does an awful lot of selling technology products all around the world. Um, I've used Abnet before, a lot of people have. It's really one of the names you go to to get there. Um, he's responsible for global IT strategy and for enterprise effectiveness. So it's not just getting the technology right, but let's change the processes and make them better. Um, and he's always just trying to take that business side, you know, the strategic side, not just the IT side. Uh, the first thing he did was change the IT organization around very quickly and transform the way it operated um, to turn it really into a, into a strategic partner um, very fast. Um, then he also got hold of one of the company's five strategic initiatives, which is this enterprise effectiveness thing, where the, the job is to go out and find any process that needs improvement and make it better. Uh, and who better than IT to run that? Who knows processes better than IT to run that? Um, now, the, the other thing that, that Steve did that I think is really neat is just kind of, once again, the same story, stepping beyond what the role is. Uh, during um, uh, some due diligence for a merger, one of Steve's people said, you know, I don't get it, but this company we, that sells equipment also sells training services. Um, I don't know what to do with this. 
And Steve said, let's do something big with it. And so he and this staffer and some other people said, we're going we're gonna to take this to the, the, the very senior part of the company. This will be a new growth business for the company. So Adnet that sells hardware and technology services now sells technology training to help people retool their training. This, in, in a company that you know, runs on tight margins and a company that you know, is growing as best it can, this is a new growth business that has huge legs going forward. Uh, Steve went out and found customers already uh, for this training service to kind of prove that it works, and now the whole company is behind making it go. So Steve, thank you. So you know, the, the way I'd like to think about it is in these times of digital acceleration, things are getting faster and faster. The case possibilities are getting bigger and bigger. Uh, the impossibilities are no longer impossibilities anymore. Um, and we need to think differently. And so what that means, the CIO role is at a crosswords, right? Does the CIO take the bull by the horns and play a strong role in leading digital? Or do they just become a support person, supporting the digital person? Um, you know, the way I think about it is this, there's never been a better time to be a great CIO. There's never been a worse time to be an average CIO. Uh, I think you'll agree that there's nothing average about these four people uh, in the room as the finalists. And I want to tell you that we had a tremendously hard job to do in choosing a winner. Um, but now, now's the time to, choose, to, to announce the winner. So if I can actually call up um, Lindsay and Ray to come up here. Uh, as I said before, we individually interviewed every single person. We did an awful lot of background checking following up on what they said to make sure that what they really were doing what they said, asking everybody we know about these, these people, and then we had to make the decision. Uh, it was very, very close, but we, we had kind of a unanimous agreement on who the winner is. Oh, I made a mistake. <laughs> Can we change the structure? No, we did the same thing. You forgot, you're an old man. Remember the year you dropped them? <laughs> They've been sitting here all night long. We can just do them one at a time and then do Okay, so we're not going to announce the winner yet. Uh, can we call up each finalist, please? Uh, so, in Alpha, Suresh, uh, can we give you your award? I was supposed to hand these things out every time we announced one of you, and um, we didn't do that. So Ray, can I give out the winner now? Yes. Okay. The winner is David Neitz.
So we'll see how this works here. <laughs> a little weird, but okay, that's better. I'm not quite as tall as the other, <laughs> the other people here. So you, uh, I, I think it's really amazing what the other uh, CIOs have done here. And uh, just hearing the stories, it's, it's so inspirational to be part of, uh, of the group and to be recognized by MIT. I'm just delighted. So I'd like to have a round of applause for the other finalists. Just incredible job. <laughs> what they've done is absolutely amazing. So you're, you're probably wondering, how does a uh, construction company that was founded by a professor at MIT back in 1947, uh, Dr. Thomas Camp actually was the professor at MIT that, that created uh, the company. Uh, and it's really a, a tipping point for our industry. We, we have a commoditization pressure of the core services we provide for uh, engineering services and then also construction have razor thin margins and our clients around the world have some unique problems. In the United States, we have challenges with water. Around the world, we have challenges with water. Uh, Flint, Michigan is a great example. California with their water shortage. And then infrastructure that's aging, trillion dollar problem. So we, as an industry, have to disrupt ourselves. We have to look at how we do things differently. We can't just build more roads. We just can't sustain the way we've been approaching it historically. So I'm really excited that to have the support of our COO and our entire executive team to unleash the power of data in really solving this problem, where we take a model and we live, have it live through its life cycle. So we can do virtual design and construction, improve that, improve the operating of that asset in a significant way. And then to look at how in developing countries we can help them as well with water problems. We have people that you know, walk for miles to, to gather the water, and how can we take innovation from our engineers and technology and bring the two together and do something disruptive there that we then bring back uh, to this country and other countries to really transform the way we look at the problems. You know, Flint, we could spend a billion dollars doing what we've always done, but why? Our engineers are just trying to figure out a different way to change that, that paradigm. So I'm very excited to be part of this. Uh, it's just been a great time to be in technology with some of the virtual reality, mixed reality. Just made it very exciting to be part of this. And I want to thank my team. Uh, we created an incredible team. Uh, I'd like to thank Amy. She's an MIT grad as well. <laughs> uh, Maria, uh, Doug, uh, Scott, and Mike. They're all just absolutely phenomenal. But the one I'd really like to thank is my wife, Cheryl, because... <laughs> She put up with moving from Denver and leaving our two daughters behind to take on this opportunity because it is a once in a lifetime opportunity to really have an impact. And she put up with, she puts up with me coming home with weird glasses on my head and doing these gestures in air and, and, and just kind of getting giddy about it or trying to sell the flooring guy on how he should do a 360 camera to help him modify his website to get more sales. But she tolerates it all, flying drones around the house and trying to create 3D models using them. But she just kind of nods her head and says, okay, great, whatever you're doing, it's great. But I, great support. Thanks, son.